Um, hello, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us for this uh, film screening and panel discussion today. Um, I am Sarah Corcoran. I use she, her pronouns, and I am the coordinator for the Safe Pennsylvania Forest Coalition, a uh, group of nonprofits here within Pennsylvania that is fighting for our uh, public lands and state forests. So um, today, I am not going to be the person who is primarily speaking. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to Brooke Linker from uh, the from KTA, um, who primarily put this video together along with a few other folks that are going to be speaking today. And um, we'll go ahead and turn it over to Brooke and share the video. Um, Prior to that, though, one last little thing. Um, we will be sharing out some questions at the end of our presentation during the panel discussion. If anyone has any questions throughout the program, you can go ahead and put it in the chat box at the bottom. And if we have time towards the end of our hour, I will uh, read those questions out. Um, if we do not get around to your questions, uh, I will compile them and I we will make sure to send out an email response in regards to those questions. So um, now I'm going to stop speaking and I'm gonna pass it over to Brooke. Thank you, Sarah. Um, so I'm Brooke Lanker. I'm the executive director of Keystone Trails Association. And uh, if you're not familiar with uh, KTA, as we're known, uh, we uh, are known uh, to provide, preserve, promote, and protect uh, hiking trails and hiking opportunities in Pennsylvania. Uh, we've been around since 1956. So um, with that brief background about KTA, I, I, it's a good segue to how we got involved in this, pro in this particular film project and our broader concern about the proliferation of ATVs and UTV activity on state forest lands. So I think it, it, um, it's fair to say that the KTA um, sees this, that kind of motorized activity as incongruent with the values of state forests. Um, people flock from all over to enjoy our public lands, and um, they expect certain experiences when they explore those places. And um, and ATVs, um, whereas I'm, you know, we, we I'm sure they're fun to ride, and I appreciate uh, everyone's right to enjoy them on private land. Um, on public lands, they are largely, again, incongruent, in my opinion, with the state forest experience that we um, that we come to expect. So, um, with that in mind, we uh, we we as an organization and certainly other organizations have been concerned about um, an effort known as the ATV Connector Pilot in North Central Pennsylvania to expand ATV riding opportunities and build connectivity to between different state forest riding uh, sites. And, um, and so with that concern, we um, are, are, I believe the right term is a signatory to a, a lawsuit um, that is trying to, uh, that sees, I should say, this activity, the pilot uh, effort as, um, in a violation of the state's environmental rights amendment. Um, in, in any case, um, we're following, we've been tracking the ATV connector pilot issue and know that in, I believe, December of uh, this year, a report will be due to the legislature from DCNR about this pilot experience. So it's something for everybody to be aware of and um, certainly there, there should be some future opportunities to comment on that and um, on that report. So uh, I guess concurrent with those other things, uh, KTA thought uh, a film could bring light to these issues, uh, bring them to better light in, in more, to more eyes, to understand uh, what this activity on state forest land is like, 
uh, what the concerns are, uh, what those potential impacts are. And um, so we teamed up with Stony Creek Films to develop a, a short documentary about this very issue. So um, you're gonna get a chance to meet the filmmaker later on, as well as two other esteemed panelists that I'll, I'll, I'll introduce after the film. But um, I, I suppose uh, it's time for us to, to check out the, the video, the film, and I'm gonna ask uh, Mike Loma to uh, cue it up for us. While Mike is queuing it up, I do want to just say um, technology functions differently for everyone within the state. If for some reason, as we're viewing this, it looks a little bit choppy on your end, I'm planning on sharing out a copy of the video as well when I share out the recording of today's presentation. Okay. First clear cutting, then mining, then fracking. Now a new wave of motorized recreation risks despoiling Pennsylvania's woods. For more than 125 years, Pennsylvania's Bureau of Forestry has ensured the long-term viability of the Commonwealth's forests. The lush woodlands under their watch conserve native plants, preserve habitat, and nurture streams. These cherished spaces beckon nature revelers seeking solitude and restoration. With the increased popularity of all-terrain and utility terrain vehicles, our public forests face unprecedented pressure to accommodate motorized recreation. The expansion of ATV and UTV trails presents indisputable threats to wildlife, forest health, water quality, and the hiking experience. The pilot program is set up to get information and, uh, and uh, see how receptive people are in North Central Pennsylvania to having ATVs on their township roads and running on state forest roads and uh, just being active in uh, North Central Pennsylvania and the counties of Potter, Clinton, uh, Tioga a little bit and uh, into uh, Lycoming County. It's being used to uh, tie some of the current ATV areas that are on state forest land. Uh, Bloody Skillet is the farthest one south, and Whiskey Springs, which uh, both of those are in the Sproul State Forest in Clinton County. And then there's uh, one ATV trail on the, on the Tide Otten State Forest, which is in Lycoming County and it would go up into Potter County. There's one in uh, the uh, Susquehannock State Forest for Potter County. And tie those all together and eventually make a connection with New York State. So they're, they're hoping to improve uh, the economy of that North Central area, but I'm not so sure how all the uh, landowners and uh, people that they're gonna be driving by are going to enjoy that. Our forests are intact. They're being conserved for the future. And making this an ATV playground up here is not going to conserve. It's going to diminish and it's going to deplete the resources. The biggest problem I see with ATVs on state forest land is that they fragment the forest. By that, I mean that the trails have to be wide enough for two ATVs to pass. If that's the question, then they have to be at least 12 feet wide. And that fragments the forest into woodlots rather than continuous forest growth. And that is a very important part because it affects everything about the forest. 
it affects the trees first of all. It affects the soils because then the soils become compacted and they lose a lot of the value that they have for nurturing the trees on, with their growth. It also affects a lot of smaller wildlife animals and birds. In other words, it's not having a conservation effect. It's having a depletion, a diminution of the forest. I know on state forest land, uh, it causes a lot of degradation and, uh, and uh, disruption of the, the ecosystem. It could have some detrimental effects having ATVs running all over. The more we see of the world out here, the more we see that everything is connected from, from the fungus way down in the ground to the stars in the sky. It's amazing. Unfortunately, the, the ATV trail in this area crosses the Susquehannock Trail, to my knowledge, at least five times. And uh, it, it, it's just an interference. It's dusty, it's noisy, and that is not why people go out into the woods to backpack, hike, or get into nature. We want to get away from the noise. The world has plenty of noise all by itself. These machines make a lot of noise, and they pollute. You can hear these things for a couple miles up in that country when they're going up and down the roads and uh, on hillsides. We know people who live along dirt roads, who have homes along dirt roads. I know several people very well, and they are complaining about the noise. This is not in the forest, but these, these are roads that they use to get to the forest. They're a dirt road, they're becoming extremely dusty, and they're noisy. It, it's discouraging. Basically, it's discouraging to go off into the woods and hear their sounds. that the state forest was bought to, in the beginning was to protect the water sources. And if someone takes a look at a map, they'll see that north central Pennsylvania with all the state forest land in it is, is ideally designed to protect the water quality in Pennsylvania. This affects wetlands. It affects um, the, the whole structure of the forest. And no matter how carefully you cross a stream with an ATV, it is going to make mud. We've got a lot of trout fishermen in this area and they are not going to like it. Um, the Tourism Bureau isn't going to like it when we find out that the trout fishermen aren't coming because of dust in the creeks. So when I go into the forest, I'm looking to escape modern life. I want to get away from um, motor vehicles of any kind. I want to see the leaves and the, on the trees, and I want to hear um, the water flowing through the creeks. I want to hear the bird song. Um, I want to see deer running through. Oh, I love hiking. It's, I used to say uh, we, go to, we go to church on Sundays, but when we go to church, it's out in the woods. So it's just nice, quiet, relaxing. It's like recharging, recharging your battery. I'm a member of the Susquehannock Trail Club and have been for a long time. The Susquehannock Trail is an 85 mile loop that travels through Potter County. Um, I've hiked it and backpacked it uh, several times along with other trails in the area. We have the Black Forest Trail. They're just a, a wonderful group of, of trails in this area. And hiking to me is, is, is like a way of life. The ATVs 
have been causing, I guess, some uh, disruption of the, the locals because we had one, uh, one example of a fellow that said uh, the one weekend he had two to three hundred ATVs going by his property and uh, it's definitely a big change from what uh, the quiet and solitude of north central Pennsylvania normally is and has been for decades. We're trying to conserve the forests of Pennsylvania, the public natural resources. And that way we can leave something for future generations. So let's keep thinking about what's going to be the future. And the future has to be a, a continuous forest that provides all the values. So I'm talking about the values for our lives and for the life of the planet. I think the ATVs can be great to use recreationally on private land or on um, someone's farm or home. Um, they're great tools, and I even think they're probably really fun recreationally, but I don't think that they have a place on state forest land, which is meant to be preserved and protected for future generations. My suggestion to the people watching and listening to this is that do something about it. We need to contact our legislators. We need to vote. That is the only thing that, they, that really gets their attention. We need to vote. We need to write letters, send them emails, and let them know just how we feel about it. The ATV in intrusion is being forced upon us, and that, that's true, it's being forced on us. North Central Pennsylvania, the PA wilds, it's just, it's wild. That's, that's what makes it great. Uh, you're more likely to see animals than people. The vistas are fantastic. The waterfalls, it's just unspoiled beauty. And I just feel that any trespassing on PA hiking trails by ATVs it's just going to be really detrimental to our enjoyment that I think we have a right to as hikers in Pennsylvania on state land. All right, thank you, Michael, for uh, sharing the film with us. And uh, I, I just, I know you saw it in the credits, uh, but I also just wanted to verbalize that we're really appreciative for the financial support to make that film. Uh, thanks to the Huplets Wildlife Grant Program of the Sierra Club and the uh, gr a grant from the Pennsylvania Public Natural Resources Trust. So we really appreciate that support um, that made that film possible. So we wanna move into uh, our panel uh, discussion portion of this program. And uh, I already alluded to our filmmaker, Michael, but uh, I wanna formally introduce everyone that's gonna um, uh, answer some questions today on, online for us. So we have um, Mike Loma, the filmmaker from Stony Creek Films, uh, a very accomplished uh, filmmaker and photographer. I also want to introduce Bob Merrill, who's a, a KTA board member, but uh, also has had an illustrious career at, in the Bureau of Forestry as a district forester um, and wore some other hats as well. 
And finally, Butch Davey, also a retired district forester for the Department of Conservation and Natural Resources. So thanks to Butch, Bob, and Michael for joining us today. Um, I guess I'd like to start off with a question that I'd like all three of you to address. Um, and that is, you know, what, what is your greatest concern about the development of these connectors? Um, so, you know, what's your greatest concern? And uh, I'm gonna start with Bob, if that's okay. For me, it is the degradation that uh, we've experienced over the years with illegal use of ATVs and the introduction of the ATVs into state forest is just going to uh, enlarge that degradation in the forest. And they cause air pollution, dust pollution, a variety of, of degradations to the state forest land. So that's in the, for decades, the. Bureau of Forestry has held the line and, and uh, realized that they do a lot, of, a lot of damage. And then just recently, the General Assembly saw fit to uh, open up state forest land for ATVs uh, in an attempt to in, improve the economy of the areas in North Central Pennsylvania. But it's to me, it's, it's really a, a big step backwards in, in trying to take care of that, that forest trust that they have to take care of. Butch, how about you? To me, the most deleterious effect of ATV use on state forest land, in my opinion, is the fragmentation of continuous forests by ATV roads. And that's what they're going to be. It's not going to be a trail like a hiking trail in the, in the woods. It's going to be a road. And that, uh, also has a deleterious a negative effect on the forest ecosystem and the ecology of the forest. And as one of the, uh, the set, uh, <clears throat> presenters said, it goes from the sky to the bottom of the ground, and that's the forest. And we have to keep that forest as a forest, not as woodlands that are just interspersed with roads and trail roads everywhere. There was a, a very famous a forest um, pathologist by the name of Dr. Alex Shigo. And he, I'd like to just give you a quote from him. Roads, roads, roads. These are not forests. There are small parcels of tree crops surrounded by roads. So in other words, what he is saying is it has a deleterious effect on individual trees within the forest, plus the other parts of the ecology of the forest. And it, it changes the whole character from a forest ecosystem to a woodlot management or a woodlot type uh, system. And that's not what the public resources of Pennsylvania are for. The public natural resources are supposed to be uh, preserved. The natural, scenic, aesthetic values of the forest. And that's what we, what we need to do. And we are, as the Commonwealth, we are the trustees of this uh, resource, nat public natural resources. And it's up to us to do the job correctly. Thanks, Butch. And Michael. Yes, sir. Your thoughts. <laughs> yeah, hi. Um, my greatest concern is once things get started, the expansion, it'll just keep going. Um, I most everyone here, Butch alluded to it, the, the serenity, the peace and quiet that everybody goes out for. And Bob mentioned this also, you can hear these things miles away. So if you're walking, if you're out there on the state forest lands, enjoying the peace and quiet, it's not always there. And I think there's plenty, what I've seen over the three months of, of filming this, with just more than enough trails for folks to ride on. I don't see where this connector is going to help the economy of these regions. I've been up there and 
what little it can afford, I think it's not worth it. Of course, these are my opinions, but as a photographer, I go out for the peace and quiet serenity. Everybody needs that in this fast paced world. And if you go out there and you can't have it, where do you go next? Thanks. Yeah, um, that actually segues nicely to my next question, which what, which is um, what, you know, as, as you're out there uh, filming, what was your reaction to seeing these impacts firsthand? Oh, yeah. Um, you saw some of it in the video, some of the ruts and, and holes and what you didn't see, what I didn't have room to put in. Off the trail, people will go, maybe there's mud here. They don't want to get their machine dirty. So they're going to take off around a tree to get around the mud. And the next guy comes in and sees that same thing, and he's going to go back around. And it just creates more havoc, degradation, fragmentation. And, um, it just it expands upon itself. The worst of what you see just will just keep getting worse. Thank you. Um, my next question is for Butch. Um, Butch, what, what type of safety issues do you foresee coming out of this, uh, this expansion of trails? I think the, the main thing is going to be uh, safety is going to be on accidents, including fatalities. Pennsylvania right now ranks third in states in the United States with fatalities. And these are almost always caused by too much speed, being on roads, and also there's things like impairment from alcohol or and trying to go off trail into some place that they should never go into. So these are safety issues that actually come down to life and death situations. And I think that uh, it's something that should be considered, especially when youth or you, young people are using these and don't seem to have, they don't, you don't need a driver's license to drive one of these. The vehicles are not inspected or licensed. So how can you expect there not to be problems? And ATV fatalities are a problem in Pennsylvania. And with this expanded use of ATVs on state forest land, if it happens, it will also increase the number of fatalities. Yeah. Thank you. Well, and, and Bob, I have a question for you as well. Hey. <clears throat> what sort of enforcement issues do you predict will occur um, as a result of the, this expansion project? Well, this could be so big and there's not a lot of rangers up in the area and it doesn't appear that the, the Pennsylvania State Police, I mean, have been too active so far on policing uh, state uh, ATVs. The ATV program was pretty much dumped in the lap of the DCNR. So right now for uh, enforcing regulations and for uh, just policing the whole area to see what's uh, what's right and what isn't right and to educate the ATV riders, the rangers, the DCNR rangers are the ones that are responsible for that. And some time ago, the policy was put out that the, which makes sense that the DCNR rangers are not allowed to, to chase because there's too many dangers involved in uh, a DCNR uh, person chasing ATVs. So it's going to be uh, pretty much a burden for the uh, DCNR rangers to try and police and regulate and uh, make sure everybody's going the, on the routes that they're supposed to use. And there's always been a tendency for ATV riders to want to explore other areas. So they get off of the, the prepared paths that they have set up in uh, go out through the woods in various places and that's where a lot of the damage occurs. The other thing that's going to be a, a burden on the decent our staff is to maintain the trails that are are there already. And if you increase the usage, it'd just be uh, more maintenance that will be needed on uh, state forest roads, on state forest uh, 
ATV trails and in the illegal areas that they're going, going to be running into. So it, it will be a burden in addition to all the things that the DCNR staff does currently. So I see it uh, to be somewhat of a problem. And most of this came about through a fiscal uh, regulation that was enacted to uh, try and improve on the, the economy. So the, the fiscal, fiscal regulation kind of superseded the state's constitution actually in the, the environmental rights amendment that was set up to prevent a lot of this. So that's kind of where I'm coming from. Yeah, thanks, Bob. I, I think that's, that's a good segue actually to a question that I, or a theme of questions that I've seen coming up in the chat that I, I, I think we should address now, which is uh, how, how did this all come about? I mean, I didn't provide any substantive detail on that at the beginning. Would, would you mind, Bob or Butch, uh, uh, expanding on um, that topic of, of how ATV riding came to DCNR and, and how the connector uh, came about? If you go back to the beginning, the ATV law was um, promulgated in 1985. And essentially what they did is they took the snowmobile law and substituted the word ATV for snowmobiles. And it's not the same. It never was the same. And um, so it started off on the wrong foot to begin with. And then uh, over the years, the ATV industry and politicians who um, are favorable to these <laughs> type, type of folks, uh, they come up with all kinds of schemes to do things and they integrated it into the fiscal code um, to use the fiscal code as kind of like a hammer to make sure that DCNR would do this ATV business or they would not get any appropriations. That's the type of, that's the type of, um, I guess, emphasis that they were promoting and DCNR did what they had to do, I guess you would say, but um, it was not, part of the forest recreation that was envisioned by any forester or, or the department to begin with. It was totally foreign to them. And at this point, the DCNR really asked to uh, take the viewpoint of trying to minimize the damage. So that's why they're, where they're trying to lead this whole thing is uh, to, to minimize when it's, they shouldn't really have to do any of that because it's not really uh, protecting the state force and it's, it's really uh, can be a real problem. Yeah, thank you, Bob. Well, I wanted to give all three of you panelists an opportunity to um, sort of address this question, which is, you know, what, what do you feel is the best way to curtail a development of more trails on state forest land. You know, what, how can, how can people affect the most change in this regard? And I'll start with, I'll, how about Michael? We'll start with Michael. Yeah, yeah, I, I think the biggest thing is to vote. First of all, find out about the pilot program, see exactly what it's going to do. Call your legislatures, you folks up in North Central PA where it's gonna affect you most, um, get involved, find out what's going on, how it's gonna affect you and the forest around you. Call your people, tell them what you like, what you don't like about this, but direct contact with the people to make these laws and legis legislate this is gonna go a long way into to help out. At the current time, the DCNR is looking for information from the, the public because this uh, supposedly is a pilot program and uh, they're looking for input. So this would be the time to really give the input because the end of this year is when uh, the final report, I believe is supposed to go in. 
Yes. I think public public uh, support for the elimination of ATVs on state forest land will go a long way toward uh, solving the problem. Let's get back to the let's get back to conserving the forest, not exploiting it. And I think if people will uh, adhere to that and also advocate for it, this will be, this is the way why the state force was, is here in the first place. And I think the employees of DCNR would appreciate the help. Thank you, Butch. Thanks, Bob, and thank you, Michael. Um, Sarah, um, that's a conclusion of my formal questions, but I, I know there's been some uh, questions posed in chat. Are there any that you can um, bring to our attention and, and share with our panelists? Absolutely. Um, you touched on a few of the questions when you were asking about the uh, origin of ATV usage on state lands in Pennsylvania and how the pilot project came to pass. Um, but one of the questions that was asked that I'd really like to, to ask to any of the panelists is, have you heard of any other states that have also been handling the similar concerns? And um, have there been any uh, wins within those states? Have there been successful, um, successfully overcoming the ATV issues within their states? Um, kind of looking to what other areas have done um, to try to uh, cut back on uh, some of these issues that we've talked about today. Well, I'm not sure about other states, but I know in uh, the U.S. Forest Service and uh, USDA that uh, their parks don't allow any ATV use because it's so disturbing and so so uh, uh, disruptive on uh, the national parks. And I know, you know, they uh, they just don't allow. It. And Pennsylvania's Game Commission doesn't permit them on uh, the properties because the uh, the damage it does for, for wildlife and, and uh, the impacts that the ATVs have on that sort of thing. Which does anyone thing? else have? Oh, go ahead, go, go ahead, ahead, Sarah. No, I was just going to ask if anyone else had any um, anything they'd like to add. Yeah, I think uh, in my research and in, in some of the shooting, we learned of a park in down in West Virginia, a private park, which has, as someone told me, over a thousand miles of trails, which is incredible. If we as Pennsylvanians could set something up, private issues off state forest lands, these where these guys can run amok, do what they want to do, and not impact on the uh, serenity of the hikers' net, I think that might be a good way to go. I will say that I know that there are private ATV parks within Pennsylvania, um, not quite to that extent, but um, there are um, areas that are being opened up to uh, uh, to see about the feasibility of uh, ATV parks, like the the Catawissa ATV area that's being um, that's being looked into in Northeast Pennsylvania. Um, but there, there are some private parks that are that are in operation in Pennsylvania already, um, which unfortunately does not cut back on the illegal riding uh, in areas that are not private parks. Um, one of the questions I can I can answer. Um, they were asking about access to the film, and that it's a really good timing uh, because of Earth Month that they would like to be able to to share it out. Um, I'm going to get the recording of this panel presentation as well as a copy of the video itself uh, to everyone who registered early next week. Um, with, with Earth Day this weekend, I'm going to be uh, kind to myself 
and uh, realistic in the fact that I probably will not get it to you until Monday or Tuesday. Um, but uh, look for that in your inbox. I will also share the video, which uh, will be open and accessible at that point. So um, please feel free to share, just give credit where credit is due. Um, and okay, let's see what Sarah? other questions. Sarah? Yes. Uh, my name is Steve Rock. I live in Doylestown, Pennsylvania. Um, and, but I have a summer home in uh, a remote county in Colorado. And I can speak to the issue out there. I'm not sure how relevant it'll be to uh, fighting this in Pennsylvania, but um, uh, there was a whole issue of starting a pilot program uh, in Hinsdale County, Colorado, um, to allow uh, more ATV and OHV use on uh, roads, uh, backcountry roads that are both BLM and U.S. Forest Service uh, areas. And there were quite a group of us who are non-residents fighting this. Uh, but we're unsuccessful. And uh, we could cite, uh, we did cite all the safety issues, the noise, the uh, air pollution, the, uh, um, the safety aspects of, um, of uh, these are off highway vehicles, but driving on in part on highways. Um, and the overriding issue came down to economics. The local town trustees and the local Hinsdale, uh, Hinsdale County commissioners voted to approve the program despite all these objectives. And the thing that came to the forefront all the way along was economics, that the people that drive the OHVs and ATVs are coming in and providing income for the small town there. And that, like I say, that overrode uh, all of the objections. And it's an unfortunate situation and as a consequence of this, it's just the use of OH, OHVs in this area is mushroomed and it's, it's just become a disaster. So I wanted to just, it's, it's, it's different than these connector trails in Pennsylvania, but um, I think some of, the, uh, some of it's relevant to that. So just wanted to offer that up. Well, thank you for sharing, Stephen. Um, and Mike, I see your hand raised. Um, I do want to ask one other question that has come up in the chat, and then I, um, if you'd like to ask your question. Um, we did have one question about uh, trespassing issues on uh, adjacent properties that uh, butt up to the, the trails. And um, asking uh, what type of things that uh, landowners can do to, um, to mitigate the effects of illegal riding um, on private property. Well, although the uh, regulation uh, of the, the ATVs is, is in uh, DCNR's lap, um, the state police do have a responsibility and if people are trespassing, that wouldn't be the direction to go because uh, DCNR rangers have no authority uh, on uh, private lands. So in that regard, you can do that. The other thing I say is uh, put signs up. I know um, with DCNR, we've had to put up barriers to uh, prevent them from going places that they, they were not supposed to go. So. It, it turns into a real mess when you think about it. It's an unfortunate, it's an unfortunate result of people not doing what is right. In other words, the ATV, the whole ATV issue kind of boils down to, do you love the forest? Do you respect your neighbors or not? And I think that um, that's a philosophical, maybe a philosophical question, but I think that's what it boils down to. And it's a shame that a private landowner has to be worried about this issue because there are state forests adjoining property where people are trespassing probably off the ATV area and then come on to private property. So it's just, it, it's a compounding problem that uh, it, it has to boil down to let's do things right for a change. And maybe, per, maybe the politicians would be able to 
be able to think about maybe what, what did we do when we made this law up? Did we really think about the forest ecosystem, whether it's on private land or in state forest land? Thank you, Bob and Bush, for answering that question. Um, Mike, uh, did you want to come off mute and ask your question, or would you like to write it in the chat and I can answer it out? Uh, I'm fine either way. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll do it verbally. Uh, easier to speak than type on a laptop. I'm going to make uh, two points. <clears throat> in, in getting these vehicles out of the, the natural state forest uh, ecosystem, which I think is admirable. Uh, providing an alternative is, is, is good. And I'm not sure if the reference to Catawissa was this example, but there, there is a pretty extensive uh, ATV off-road uh, park uh, established by the Northumberland County commissioners, uh, basically outside of uh, Shimokin on formerly uh, strip mined coal lands of, of the anthracite area, which seems a, a lot more appropriate and they, they seem to be loving it. And, and it's popular. Uh, I follow it from a distance. I, I grew up over there, but I, I live in, in, in Lewisburg now. So I follow it from a kind of a hometown perspective. And I, I won't comment on, I, I think they're still trying to figure out the relationship with the town and the city of Shimokin with regard to noise and uh, riding the vehicles that are not licensed on public streets. That's a work in progress and I, I wish them luck. <clears throat> but the, the second point I, I, I wanna make <clears throat> is, is emphasize the issue on noise. Noise from uh, these type of vehicles, is, is it's not just from ATVs and, and off-road, but as the, warmers, the, the weather is getting warmer, uh, there is an, ex an excessive amount of noise coming from illegally modified mufflers on licensed vehicles. And we hear them, you hear them, we all hear them. And I would really like to see the Sierra Club uh, take this issue on. And it's, it's just going to get worse. Uh, you can sell illegally modified mufflers because the manufacturers will uh, cover themselves with uh, notices on, on the labels of their product. And there is no enforcement from state police or local officials or local police when, when you call to, uh, and to report these. And uh, so that's, that's my second point and really a, a request to the Sierra Club to add that noise is a form of air pollution. And we really need to be recognizing that and cognizant of that uh, from illegally modified mufflers. Uh, there's more sources, but I, I think that is the most uh, significant one because it's, it's mobile. And they can also end up in state forests and affect uh, your enjoyment of the forest and also affecting wildlife. So uh, I'll, I'll let it go at that. Thanks. Thanks for sharing that, Mike. Um, the Sierra Club does have an air quality conservation team um, and I can, I can share those concerns with them and uh, see, see where that conversation goes. Great, thanks. Um, no problem at all. Um, Speaking about different forms of pollution, we did have a, um, a comment in the chat um, about um, folks that bring in um, like beverage containers or other forms of uh, trash uh, to, uh, to, to have social gatherings on uh, and off the trails and how um, ATV use might be able to um, make that easier for folks to bring their trash in farther on the trail. Um, and uh, that, that brought up a question of the enforcement and what y'all think might, um, what y'all think the impact might be on other forms of pollution uh, due to this connector project. Well, I can see it, yeah, just adding to it. <clears throat> and not only the trash that they could possibly bring in and distribute wherever they feel it should, uh, you know, where the, wherever they feel they want to let go of it. Uh, most of the trails that I see that were developed previously, the invasive plants are a real pain in the neck because uh, they've introduced so much of that into 
what was a natural ecosystem in our forest. So it all goes together with putting these machines in places that uh, really shouldn't be. Uh, thank you for that. Um, I'm going to do a quick time check. It is uh, just about 10 minutes before the top of the hour. Um, so, Brooke, I'm going to pass it over to you for a quick wrap up, um, since I believe we have addressed all of the comments in the chat at this time. But if anyone thinks of any other questions uh, after this presentation is done today, um, please feel free to reach out to me or to any of our presenters um, with those questions and we'll do our best to answer them. Um, so with that being said, um, Brooke. Thanks, Sarah. Um, you know, I think it was Mike, uh, not Mike Loma, but the other Mike that spoke uh, a few moments ago that mentioned wildlife. And I know that got some mention in the film, but I think that uh, needs to be underscored. You know, what are the effects on wild, the direct impacts on wildlife from this increased riding activity. And um, I mean, ATVs and UTVs have big tires. Um, they may be traveling at times at, at high speeds. And there's a lot of critters that live in the Pennsylvania wilds that can't get out of the way very fast. So whether it's a snake or a turtle or salamanders or other wildlife, that um, you find on the forest floor, you know, there's a lot of impacts happening that are probably difficult to quantify. And those, and many of those critters already have a pretty tough time just uh, with all the other threats that, um, that affect them day to day. So uh, I wanna just, I think, acknowledge that the wildlife aspects of this issue are really important, um, just like, the, this, the impacts from ATVs that affect the human experience as well. So, um, and, and I guess just to build on that or to, to bring us home, to bring us full circle is that the, um, the ATV connector pilot is just one more thing. It's one more um, impact, gross impact on an area that faces other big challenges so think about um, the um, natural gas development in that region. There's, you know, it's, it's quite extensive. It's a very heavy industrial process. Uh, it is unlike prior, um, the prior shallow gas drilling experience in the region, albeit that it impacts too, but this, is a, this is a, has a much heavier footprint. So the region's been, affected by the drilling boom and will continue to be affected by it. And then we have a new threat emerging uh, in a low fly zone over a portion of the PA wilds. Some of the same areas where the ATV connector pilot is, is a, a reality. Um, you have a proposal by the Mar uh, Maryland National Guard to do uh, to sorties, uh, training flights um, over much of the year uh, over many days a week, uh, over several hours a day, potentially, at very low altitudes. So this issue, there's a comment period for on that proposal right now that I encourage everyone to get involved with. But, um, but that's yet another effect. Um, the noise of um, military flights at low altitudes is, is another direct impact on uh, outdoor recreationalist pursuing solitude in the PA wilds. Um, and it's another effect on the wildlife. Um, and those are just some of the, some of the concerns we have in that region. And there will be other, there are other things too. So, um, so really that, those other uh, considerations are, are, to be put together with the fact that there's um, motorized recreation being promoted, being accommodated uh, in, in, or in and on those state forest lands that we cherish. So um, 
anyway, just wanted to provide that additional context and, and food for thought. Um, and with that comment, I'm going to go back to Sarah, I suppose. But I appreciate everybody's time today and, and participating in this webinar. Uh, Brooke, I appreciate you bringing up the compounding issues that are impacting uh, the region because it is, it. I mean, ATVs are one aspect of, um, you know, the way that the this very scenic area, this very quiet area is being, is, is being approached. So um, I had put a comment in the chat for folks, if um, anyone is interested in more information about the low fly project in the PA wilds, I'd be happy to share some of that information as well. That public comment period is open until May 17th. Um, so if you would like to submit a comment on behalf of yourself, um, I can I can share that information out. Um, there were one or two other questions, but we will um, we will address those in our follow up. Um, so, but thank you for thank you for sharing those. Uh, expect a copy of this recording early next week. Um, and if you have any additional questions, as I said before, please reach out to myself or to Brooke or to any of our wonderful panelists today. Um, thank you very much to all of our panelists for coming and speaking on behalf of this issue. And um, thank you, Michael, for uh, putting together this wonderful video. Um, it was it was great. And um, I hope that everyone has a wonderful week. Don't be too cold out there with the cold snap this week and have a wonderful Earth Day. <laughs>